Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The text for this morning's message comes from our gospel reading, Matthew chapter 4, and uh, where Jesus refers back to the Old Testament reading from Isaiah, and he says in verse 16 of Matthew 4, The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. So this morning the question is, are you dwelling in darkness? If you do not have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, the answer is yes. For us as Christians, from time to time, the answer is yes. We all know what darkness is. If you've ever been into some of the caves where they give tours, and I did as a kid, I haven't been in a long time, but I remember in, in several of the caves we went into, it was always a thing. They would take us down to the deepest part where there was no... Uh, uh, natural light, only artificial light, and would gather us all around the guide, and they would shut off the lights. My mom would scream, along with some other people, and then they would explain how this is total darkness. And it is. You can't see anything, uh, unless somebody's wearing something reflective. You can't see anything around you. You can't see your hand in front of your face. It is total darkness. And then they would turn the lights back on. Everybody's eyes would die a light or dilate or de-dilate, whatever it is they do, we'd all stumble around for a while. But as Christians, we are born into this world in sin, separated from God. And what that means is we are born in total darkness. We are in spiritual darkness. We can't see what we need to see. We can't go where we need to go, and we can't do the things we need to do because the light has been blocked out. Total darkness. Then a great thing happens. Someone shares the gospel with us, and that great light comes upon us. We are bathed in the light of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. That's why we have candles and other lights in our churches and in our services, to represent Christ, the eternal light of the world, a light that cannot be extinguished. In other parts of the scripture, it talks about this great light has come into the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. The sin, Satan, and death cannot overcome the light of the world, Jesus Christ. So this morning, little Malia May Brayton was brought to us in darkness, and now Christ has, has bathed her, continues to bathe her in his great light. He shines his light upon her and all of us who believe. And it's not just so we can stand still and stand in the light. Many of us, when we're in the darkness and the light comes on, we rush to the light and we stand there until more lights come on. Our light, the true light, the light of the world is a movable light. Think of the star that led the Magi to the Christ child and the shepherds and others. This great light, the light of the world, shines upon us, and it does not sit still. It begins to lead us. As I told the children, the Bible, God's word, is a light unto our, our feet and a lamp unto our path. We're not to stand still and bathe and be warm in the light. We are supposed to move with the light. And that for us sometimes is hard to do because we like being in the light. We like what we can see. We know what's around us and we're comfortable. The problem when the light moves is you can only see so far. When I left uh, the seminary, that light took me to Minot, North Dakota. And that was a pretty scary trip. Never been to North Dakota. Fortunately, it was in the summertime. I could see the road. Um, and then God, the light, led me here to Barnesville, Minnesota. With just enough light to see ahead to make the trip and not a whole lot of light beyond that. And as time, the light gets bigger and bigger to meet our needs, but the light is always moving. The light is always moving. Malia will grow up as we all do. She'll finish school, hopefully. She may go to college or may not. She may leave home, maybe not right away. But it will happen. The light will lead her somewhere and she will go. 
prayerfully we pray for all of the saints that as the light leads them, we will follow that light. We won't be stubborn and say, I like this spot. I don't want to move from this spot. I like it. It's warm. Uh, there's a TV show where a guy sits in a particular spot in a room on a sofa, and it's always his seat because it's in a perfect position to get the cool air when it's warm and the warm air when it's hot and it's just right for the TV. He's happy with his spot. Don't mess with his spot. God says your spot's wherever I send you or lead you. And so are you dwelling in darkness? Are you staying behind and letting the light go? Are you picking yourself up and moving with the light? Yes, it can be scary. But at the same time, it should not be scary to you. Because the one who is the light is the one that came into the world for you, lived a perfect, sinless life so that you would be able to have forgiveness of sins because he would suffer more than you will ever suffer, more than any human being will ever suffer or us combined in our entire lives. Suffered and then willingly died on a cross. He gave himself up for crucifixion on a cross, a very ugly, dirty cross, not unlike the one up here, but a lot dirtier and uglier and bigger. He allowed himself to be nailed to that and to die and then rise again so that you and I can have the light of the world. Him. And it's not just to keep you warm and keep you comfortable and keep you safe. As I said, it moves. And so then what happens is, is God wants you to absorb this light, if you will, to read his word, to find out what it's all about, to be in service, to take Holy Communion, to serve others. And then that light begins to be refracted or reflected, shining out of you into this world. Now, yeah, it's a kind of overcast class day outside, but it looks like it's light. But in reality, it's very dark. For a lot of people in this world who don't know God, who don't know Jesus, who don't have him as their savior, it's a very dark, nasty, unloving, despairing place. And you get to take the light of the world, Jesus Christ, as you go into the world, and it shines forth out of you like a beacon, a lighthouse, if you will, to bring hope and to bring the light of Christ, his hope, his light, his love, his forgiveness, all of the things he has to offer, you take into the world and you share. Now, if you know anything about lighthouses, uh, the light can be blocked out. There are ways to put things in place, shutters and whatnot, so it can stay on, but the ships can't see the light. And that's what happens to you if you don't go with the light. If you stand still and don't move with the light and you're comfortable where you're at, other people are not seeing the light. People that God is counting on you to share the light with. Now, for I think almost everybody in this room, we are blessed because someone in our lives, parents, grandparents, brought us to the baptismal font, shared the gospel and the light of Christ with us. There are a lot of people in this world who don't have that privilege. And God has tasked you, each and every one of you, and that includes Malia when she's not here. When she's back there, okay. I thought that was an interesting child back there. Um, even her to share what she has with the rest of the world. So you can try to dwell in place wherever you're at. And here's a, a little counseling for you. If you don't move with the light, the light's not going to stand still. It's going to continue to move, and you get left in the darkness. And nobody wants to be left in the darkness. Nobody. We like light. It causes us to be warm. It causes us to grow. It makes us feel alive. God wants you to follow the light, to dwell in his light, his son, Jesus Christ, the entire time you're on this earth. Because this is not your home. The light is going to eventually lead you to your new, oh, no, scratch that, to your home, which is in heaven, where a place has been prepared for you. So are you dwelling in the darkness? Are you happy in the darkness? Unfortunately, as human beings, we most of the time are. Most crimes are committed in the darkness. Most sins are committed in the darkness. Why? Because we feel like people can't see us. And naively enough, some people think God can't see them. It's not true. God wants you to dwell in his light, his son, Jesus Christ. Not just for the moment, not just in the moment of holy baptism, not just in the moment you're in church, but every moment of your life. 
and then to let that light go forth into the world. What a beautiful sight it would be if just a fraction of Christians did that every day. What a changed world this would be. Think about the news headlines. They would start to change. We wouldn't be so fixated on protesters and all these other things that go on. We'd be fixated on this change that has happened in, it happened in the book of Acts. The Christians turned the world upside down. And you can do that too dwelling in the light of Jesus Christ and allowing that light to take you wherever God takes you and to do whatever he has called you to do and rejoice in every opportunity you get to share the light of life with everyone you meet. Go in his peace. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.